This is the Dough Roller Money Podcast, episode 179. My name is Rob Berger. I'm the founder of DoughRoller.net and the host of this podcast. Today, I'm going to present to you a totally free investment tracking, asset allocation, rebalancing spreadsheet. Thanks to a loyal listener named Dan. I think you're going to love it. Welcome to the Dough Roller Podcast, where the best thing money can buy is financial freedom. We help you make more, spend less, and invest the rest. And now your host, Rob Berger. Whether you're just starting out buried under a mountain of debt or well on your way to financial freedom, this is the podcast to help you take your finances to the next level. Hey, everybody. Hope you're having a great day. Well, I know a lot of you have been looking forward to this spreadsheet because I mentioned it, oh goodness, probably a month ago. And I've gotten a number of email from folks, uh, you know, wanting to know where it is. Well, today is the day. Uh, I'm going to walk walk you through it. You're going to have access to it. Hopefully, it'll help you. I think it will. I think it's a fabulous uh, spreadsheet. Again, it, all, all the credit goes to a listener named Dan. We'll just call him Dan the Man because uh, I won't give you his last name. Not that anyone would know who he is, I'm sure, but. Uh, he was kind enough to put this spreadsheet together, and actually I'm going to present sort of a somewhat modified and simplified version, but I can see us adding to it maybe down the road, uh, adding some more features to it. Uh, so that's the plan for, for today. Before we get to the spreadsheet, I wanted to thank those that have, have started supporting the show. It's sort of a new approach I went to rather than bringing sponsors on the show, and a number of people have started supporting the show on a monthly basis, and I can't tell you how much that means to me. I really, really am grateful. I know that not everyone can support the show. In fact, most people uh, either can't or won't support the show financially, and that's fine. That's, that's just the way it goes, and, and no worries. Um, but if you do want to support the show financially, you can. It's very easy to do. You just go to doughroller.net slash support. Okay, with that, I want to get to uh, the spreadsheet again. I'll probably repeat this throughout today's show, but all of the credit goes to a listener named Dan. Uh, and one of the great things about this spreadsheet for me was that he, Dan taught me a lot about Excel. Now, this is in a Google Docs uh, spreadsheet, but same concept. And there are a number of features that Dan used in creating this spreadsheet that I had never used before and, and wasn't aware of how they worked. And um, so in that sense, it, it was very helpful, not just in terms of tracking investments, which I'll show you as we walk through it, but just an understanding a little bit more about the uh, the features and functionality available in a spreadsheet. So uh, that was very helpful to me, and I'm going to walk through some of those with you today. Now, uh, how do you get the spreadsheet? So you're going to want to go to the show notes for this episode. And to do that, this is episode 179, so it's real easy. Just go to doughroller.net slash podcast. 179, podcast 179, that will redirect you to where the show notes uh, for this episode reside. And you'll see there an, an article describing how this spreadsheet works, basically a, 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 a typed version of this podcast, although it won't be a transcription, but uh, walking through how the spreadsheet works and a link uh, for you to open up the spreadsheet. You'll want to save a copy of it so that you can edit it. And then, of course, once you've done that, you can uh, edit away and add your own investments, and we'll walk through how that's done. Uh, but you'll again, you'll want to go to doughroller.net slash podcast 179 to see the show notes and get a link to the spreadsheet. Okay, so how does this spreadsheet work? Well, it's pretty straightforward. There are two sheets to the spreadsheet. One is called holdings, which is where we're going to list all of our investments by account. Uh, and then uh, asset class, uh, which w will allow us to sort of summarize all of our investments in, ter in terms of our asset allocation and to know if uh, if we have um, need a rebalance. So that's sort of the idea. So I kind of use this spreadsheet, uh, and I've modified mine even a little bit more, but uh, to do a couple of things. One, it just it's, it's an easy way to see how my investments are doing uh, because it's updated in real time. Uh, you know, I, now I have individual stocks and ETFs which get priced throughout the trading day, so I can literally sit in front of my spreadsheet. Uh, not that I do, not that I do this. I'm not quite that bad, but uh, and watch the prices change. For mutual funds, they get priced at the end of the trading day, usually about, I think for mine, probably by about 6 p.m. on the, after the close of a market, you'll see the prices update roughly around there. Uh, but uh, it's a great way just to see how your 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 investments are doing, what your total balance is. Uh, but then, of course, it also helps you look at your asset allocation, 
you, you can, it's a great place to put your, your plan, how much you want in stocks versus bonds, U.S. versus foreign, whatever. Uh, so you have that, but then, it, then it'll say, okay, that's your plan, uh, but here's where you actually are. You know, um, um, share prices move up and down, stocks go up or down, bonds go up or down, and you drift, your portfolio will drift away from your plan. So this spreadsheet will show you that drift and even use, it even uses color codes to alert you when there's a problem, when you've drifted too far. Maybe you want, oh, I don't know, say 65% in stocks and stocks have gone up and you're now at 72%. Well, it'll show that in red to, to get your attention to say, hey, you really need to do something here. And all of that is customizable. I mean, it really is a fantastic spreadsheet. So with that, let me kind of walk through how it works. As I said, there are two, two sheets to this workbook, a holdings sheet uh, and a asset class sheet. So the starting point, I think, is in the holdings sheet where you just list all of your investments. Now, when you open up this spreadsheet, you're going to see it pre-populated with a uh, hypothetical portfolio. This is not my portfolio. This is not Dan's portfolio. He just populated it basically with primarily, let's see, almost entirely, I guess, all Vanguard funds. Um, and it's a, it, it started out when he sent it to me. It's interesting. It started out, I think the value, if I recall, was 500000 Well, as I look at it today, as I record this podcast, the value is 534000 So this was a couple of months ago that he sent it to me, but I guess things have, have gone pretty well uh, for this hypothetical uh, uh, portfolio. Uh, but it's, it's simple. Here's what we do. So there's a couple of features that this spreadsheet uses that you need to understand. The first is uh, what's called a, a, the Google Finance function. And I've talked about this in the past, but if you input a, the ticker symbol, say I have a mutual fund or an ETF, there's a function that will pull out all kinds of information about that investment, including things like the name of it, uh, its um, current price, um, its um, expense ratio, for example. And so this spreadsheet takes advantage of that Google Finance function. So again, let's walk through on the holdings page. The very first investment that you'll see, it's in row three. Uh, it's it's the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund Admiral Shares. It's the, the symbol is VTSAX. And what you'll see, you'll see the account that it's in. Again, this is all hypothetical portfolio, but it the account that it's in in this hypothetical portfolio is the Vanguard Rollover IRA. And then you see the symbol, VTSAX. You see the name of, of, of the mutual fund. You see its category, in this case, U.S. stocks. Then you'll see a column called lookup, which is co column E, which I, I basically want you to ignore for now. It has a purpose that's not relevant to this spreadsheet, but it probably will be as I update and add features to this uh, with Dan's help, I might add. But the lookup is, a, is an automatically calculated column. You can just ignore it. In fact, you can hide it if you want. There's a little, if you hover over the E column, there's a little carrot, uh, and you click that, it's a drop down. And you can you can click hide column and it goes away. All right, uh, column F are, is the number of shares that you would own in each of these investments, and then the price per share, uh, the total value, the percentage that that investment represents of your overall portfolio, and then it has the expense ratio of that uh, mutual fund, and then the weighted expense ratio. In other words, um, how much of your uh, of your of of your total portfolio is represented in the expense of that fund? Now, I kind of walk through all of those because you might be thinking, "Well, golly, that's a lot of work. I got to input all of that information for all of my mutual funds." No, you don't. In fact, you ha you only have to put in a few things, and in the spreadsheet, they're highlighted in in a sort of yellowish color, uh, and that's all. The rest gets populated for you automatically. That's the beauty of it. So um, what you would input is the account that it's in, and this is just however you want to describe your own accounts. Um, you know, I, I usually do what Dan's done. I have the where it's located, so it could be Vanguard, could be Fidelity. Uh, in my case, that's where my 401k is, so I have a Fidelity um, a, a account. And so whatever you want to call the account number, then you'd put the symbol uh, of, of the mutual fund or the ETF. And from that, most of the rest of the data not all of it, but most of it gets uh, brought into the spreadsheet automatically. So, for example, the name, uh, which is the third column, uses the Google Finance function. So once it, once it knows the symbol in, in the second column, column uh, B, uh, it can then pre-populate the name. Uh, you do have to select the category, uh, and we'll talk about that in a minute. It's just a drop-down box, and, and what you'll see when you, when you open the spreadsheet is five categories, U.S. stocks, 
international stocks, bonds, alternatives, which I would think would be commodities and real estate probably, and then cash. Those are the five categories. You can add to those. I'll come back to that in a minute. You want to input the number of shares you own in that investment. And then from that, uh, the price is automatically pulled in for you, the price per share, again, based on the Google Finance function. The value is simply calculated, the number of shares you entered times the price that the Google Finance function pulls in. Uh, the portfolio percentage is calculated. Once you, you'll need to have all of your investments listed, and then the portfolio percentage gets calculated. Uh, the fund's expense ratio, again, we can thank the Google Finance function. It goes out and grabs the expense ratio. Uh, in the case of the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund Admiral Shares, VTSAX, it's 0 0.05 or five basis points. And then, again, the, the weighted expense ratio uh, is, a, is, a is a calculated number as well uh, from a formula that Dan put into the spreadsheet. Again, uh, once you have all of your investments listed, uh, it, it will calculate that. So as you add more investments, the weighted expense ratio can change for each individual um, investment. Uh, and that's what you do. You kind of go row by row. In fact, what you could do with this spreadsheet is just overwrite the existing columns. Or you could copy a column and you want to copy all of the formulas over into an, or a row, all of the formulas over into a new row. And again, you're going to put in the account, the symbol, and the number of shares, and the rest should get uh, pre-populated for you, with one exception. For whatever reason, the Google Finance function oftentimes, and maybe always, fails to work with an ETF. I don't know why, uh, but it, it shouldn't, but it does. So uh, for ETFs, I just, and Dan did the same thing, you hand code the expense ratio. Uh, but for mutual funds, it should pull it in for, for you. And of course, if you own individual stocks like I do, that's one of the beauties of stocks. The expense ratio is zero, right? So I'd, 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 I'd hard code that into the spreadsheet as well. So your first task when you open up this spreadsheet is to go to the holdings tab and simply walk through listing all of your investments. Again, once you put in the symbol and the account name uh, that you're going to give it, um, and you'll see that this spreadsheet is organized by account name. Uh, so for example, in the Vanguard rollover IRA, there are actually five different investments Again, this is a hypothetical portfolio. You, you know, for your accounts, you may only have one investment. In some accounts, who knows, maybe you've got 20 or 30. Uh, but I, I break it out by account and uh, account name, the symbol, and the number of shares. And again, and then the rest should all be populated for you, except again, with ETFs, you may have to, to hand code or uh, hard code the expense ratio uh, into, into the, into the um, spreadsheet, but not the weighted expense ratio. That will still get calculated for you. And so when you look at this hypothetical portfolio, what you'll see is, again, the total value is $534,000 and change. By the way, it, that could be very different depending on when you look at it, because you know some might be listening to this podcast a year from now. We're in May of 2015. You know, or who knows, 10 years from now, and the, the portfolio could be a lot different because it does get updated automatically. That's part of the beauty of it. The weighted expense ratio of this portfolio, eight basis points. Isn't that a beautiful thing? It's because they're all Vanguard funds, and they're just, well, they're just cheap. Now, uh, a couple of things before we move to the, to the second and last sheet, the asset class. I, I want to mention the category. I talked about that, where if you, there's a little carrot. If you click it, you see a drop down and there are five choices, U.S. stocks, international stocks, bonds, alternatives, and cash. So you could leave it like that and, and classify all of your investments within one of those categories. But I know some of you like to really break it out. You might want a category for large cap U.S. stocks, small cap, maybe uh, international stocks, and then emerging markets separately. Maybe you want to break out your bond portfolio between government and corporate, maybe, you know, or interna U.S. and international. Maybe you've got munis and you've got high yield and, you know, whatever. Maybe maybe you're long in Puerto Rican bonds and, and you're playing that market. Uh, I don't know. The point is you can make this as complicated as you want. How do you add to the drop-down list? Well, this is one of the features of, of Excel that I had never used that, that obviously Dan does, and it was kind of good to know that it's there. If you highlight um, a, a, a uh, the column for categories or one of the cells. And then you, in, in the, again, this is in the, the Google Docs version of the spreadsheet. You click on the data drop down. You'll see uh, at the very bottom an option for validation. And if you click on that, and I'm doing this while I highlight uh, uh, cell uh, D3, uh, which is for the, the Vanguard fund that we've talked about, and it's currently set to U.S. stocks. If you click validation, 
you'll see uh, the options. And they're all five listed there, separated by commas, U.S. stocks, international stocks, bonds, alternatives, and cash. Well, you can change it by simply adding to the list or changing this list. It'll, it'll put in the drop-down box whatever you put in this, uh, in this pop-up window separated by commas. So you could break it out into all kinds of asset classes if you want to. It's up to you. I'm going to leave it with these five for, this, uh, for the spreadsheet that you'll see. And you can make it as, as, as complicated as you want to. And, and now, but what you do is going to affect the second sheet in this spreadsheet, and we'll get to that now. So once you've got all your holdings in there uh, and you switch over to the asset class sheet, this is a, a great way to look at your investments very quickly and the asset allocation. And it's a very simple sheet. What Dan has done is you'll see the five categories, U.S. stocks, international stacks, stocks, alternatives, bonds, and cash. And there's a, a, a row for each one. Now, of course, if you want to complicate this in the holdings sheet, you're then going to have to complicate it in the asset class sheet, which is fine. It's going to be a matter of adding some rows. But what he's done is he's, he's set out two uh, asset a allocation plans. Um, one is by Rick Ferry. Uh, we've, I've had Rick on the show. Rick's a good friend of mine. He, he wrote the book all about asset allocation, uh, you know, a very knowledgeable uh, investment advisor and uh, runs a great uh, company portfolio solutions that I think offers some of the lowest cost investment advisory services you'll find anywhere. Um, anyway, he's got his portfolio that, that, that Rick apparently recommends. I guess this is from the asset allocation, all about asset allocation book, but I don't actually recall. It's been a while since I've read that book. But it's 54% stock, uh, U.S. stocks, 27% international, 9% alternatives, 10% bonds, nothing in cash. Uh, th that's just a frame of reference. It's not there to tell you that's how you should invest. It's just a, a, a Rick Ferry uh, um, uh, model portfolio. And then what Dan did is included a, a column for the personal capital. You know, I use personal capital. I've talked a lot about them. I think their dashboard is, is the best out there, and it's free. You can check it out at doughroller.net slash PC. That is an affiliate link. But in any event, Dan put in the asset allocation that apparently personal capital uh, recommends. It's not dramatically different than Rick's, but it's different. Again, both of those are there just as a frame of reference. We could add others. The three fund portfolio is one I've talked about. Um, Swenson um, has one in, in, uh, in his book. Um, you know, we could add, add many. But in any event, there are, there are two model portfolios. What's important to you is your asset allocation, and that's found in column D. Now, what you'll see there, it's called My Target, and you'll see some percentages, 55% stocks, U.S. stocks, 25% international stocks, 10% alternatives, 8% bonds, 2% cash. Let me be clear, that is not my portfolio. That is not my asset allocation. It's just there as a hypothetical uh, to show you how the spreadsheet works. You need to decide what's best uh, f for you. But that's the target. Now, what's interesting is the next column, column E, is the actual. What the actual does is it takes information from the holdings sheet, brings it into this sheet, and calculates your actual allocation to each of these asset classes. Uh, and by the way, that kind of brings us back to that the holdings sheet where we talked about the categories and the dropdowns. That's why this is so important. It uses the information uh, in that column, which which of the different asset classes you pick for each of your investments, to know, that's how it knows how much you have in U.S. stocks and how much you have in international stocks and all of the other asset classes. Now, as I record this podcast, uh, this particular portfolio is um, overexposed to U.S. stocks. The target in this hypothetical portfolio is 55%, but the actual is 64.59%, the difference of just under 10%. So this would be a portfolio that might be in need of some rebalancing. Now, it shows you the difference in column F, and it actually shows three of the five asset classes. Again, this will change as the prices change. So if you're listening to this podcast, who knows, even a week from now, certainly a year from now, it'll look different. Uh, but today, it shows three of the five asset classes, their, their difference in red. And how does that work? Well, you'll see in the spreadsheet, column G, it's labeled threshold. Uh, threshold is a percentage, and you get to put in what you want. Um, right now, it's 5% for U.S. stocks and international stocks, 2.5% for alternatives, 2% for bonds, and just 50 basis points for cash. The idea is, the way this threshold works is, 
let's use U.S. stocks, for example, the threshold is 5%. When the, when the difference between your target allocation to U.S. stocks and the actual amount you have invested in U.S. stocks is greater than your threshold, in this case 5%, it'll highlight the, the difference column in red as a visual way to say, hey, you need to look at this. You set a threshold of 5%. Well, your target to U.S. stocks is 55%, and, and, and the actual is more than 5% uh, above or below that. In fact, it's, in this case, almost 10%. So that's a great visual way uh, to see not just that there's a difference between your target and your actual, because there almost always is some level of difference, right? But when that difference exceeds a threshold, and the great thing about this spreadsheet that Dan created is that you dictate uh, what that threshold should be. Now, the final column here is the actual current value of each asset class, and then it totals it at the bottom. The other thing that Dan did, and by the way, you're really going to want to see this visually. I know it's probably hard to follow as I'm sort of describing this in the podcast. Uh, if, you can, if you can look at the spreadsheet while you're listening to this podcast or listening to it again, that would be great. Uh, but the other thing he did was um, uh, a graph. So you have your portfolio allocation, your 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 actual allocation graph, and your target allocation uh, on the same sheet, uh, uh, the asset class sheet. So you can quickly see how your actual actual portfolio differs from uh, your plan or your target. And that's it. Pretty simple spreadsheet. I mean, it does a lot behind the scenes, uh, but once you get it set up, it's really easy. Um, and, and in fact, the only thing you have to do once you get it set up is update the, the number of shares you own in each in each investment. You can just do it once a month or once a quarter, but as you're making in, uh, new investments, uh, say into your 401k or your IRA or wherever, obviously the number of shares you own in each mutual fund or ETF is going to change. And then as you uh, as your funds reinvest dividends, right, uh, shares, uh, the share number could change. So that's the one sort of upkeep that you'll need uh, in order to keep the, the spreadsheet current that's simple to do. And again, you, you can do it just once a month or once a quarter or, or whatever you want. One of the things I like about the spreadsheet is I have a, a set up as a, a, I have it bookmarked and I can just click a button and uh, go to my, my own spreadsheet with my own investments and quickly see uh, what my value is and how it's changed. Uh, it's a great way to sort of quickly check uh, your investments. Now, um, you might say, well, if, we, if I have this, why do I need anything else? Well, um, the truth is you don't need anything else. You could just use this. Uh, it doesn't put your personal information on some other company's server. I mean, certainly it's on, it's on a Google Docs server, but it doesn't have any of your account information, you know, your account number, your password. And for those of you that don't like to give out that information, uh, you know, this, I think, is a great way to track your investments. Now, to put this in some context, I, I use three tools. I've talked about them. I use this spreadsheet now. Uh, that Dan created. I still use personal capital uh, because I think it's sort of the I think it's sort of the Cadillac of, um, of of financial dashboards, tracking not only investments, asset allocation, fees, and all those other things, but also just money management, cash flow. Um, so I, I still use that, and I still use Morningstar. Morningstar allows me to track performance down to the penny and shows some great information about all the investments, but it's a manual process. I use it to track my individual stocks in large part so I, I can know how they're doing relative to the market. And then I can also report to you on how I'm doing, whether it's good or not so good. Uh, well, you know, so far it's been pretty good, but, uh, you know, time will tell. But having, having played with the spreadsheet, I can tell you that I look at it almost every day. Uh, it really is that good. And here, now, here's, now th this is what we're giving to you. Dan created it. I'm sharing it with you. But now I, I think it's only fair that I ask something of you all in return. And that is this. If you come up with ways that this spreadsheet can be improved, let me know. I mean, maybe together we can make, we can, you know, I think it's a great spreadsheet, uh, but maybe together we can make it even better. Now, I will say that the spreadsheet that Dan sent me has a third sheet that I'm not including at the moment for a variety of reasons. Um, and I think we'll add that maybe down the road. Um, but I wanted to keep this sort of streamlined. Uh, but even so, you know, the, I'm sure with all the, 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 the Excel gurus out there, uh, you may have ways to improve it. So if you do, shoot me an email, dr.doroller.net. Would love to hear from you. Uh, but again, I think right out of the box, I think you'll really, 
find this spreadsheet to be extremely useful. Uh, it does take, you know, a little time to just kind of understand how it works and how input in, in one spot in the spreadsheet affects outcomes in another. Uh, but again, it's just two sheets, um, fairly straightforward. So hopefully you won't have any trouble. But if you do, shoot me an email and I'll do my best to answer your question. And if I can't, I'll email Dan for help. Dan may be sorry he sent this to me. I, I, I don't think so. Anyway, um, so there you go. It's a great spreadsheet. Hope you enjoy it. Hope it helps you in your investing and tracking your investments and, and, and asset allocation and rebalancing. And, you know, let me know what you think and how, how it works out for you. And, uh, well, there you go. Now, remember, again, the show notes, go to doughroller.net slash podcast 179. I think that'll be a big help. And obviously, it'll be how you get a link to the spreadsheet. And then, and then once you have that, you can create a copy of it so that you can begin to edit it uh, with your own uh, individual investments. Well, there you go. Hey, hope you have a great day. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy. It's a really cool spreadsheet. Well, yeah, financial freedom too. <laughs>